Hey, Nicholas Klikas of the Klikas Law Firm again. Um, you know, last time we were talking about separation and divorce, and um, next week we'll be talking about premise liability, slipping and falling in a store or on somebody's property, etc. So stay tuned for that. It's uh, good stuff. But um, this week, want to do uh, talk a little bit about workers' comp because I had a couple of calls about that today. And um, while it, I can explain it fairly simply, it's very tricky stuff. So don't try and do it on your own if you're injured on the job. Um, call the Clicus Law Firm or somebody to help you with it. But basically, um, there are a lot of buzzwords in workers' comp law because it's a statutorily created body of law. In other words, it was created by the legislature. It's true black letter law. And the way it works is workers' comp will pay three things, basically. If you are on the job within the scope of your employment, furthering your employer's business, and you're injured, it's a compensable injury. You don't have to show negligence. You're not entitled to punitive damages and pain and suffering, but it is compensable. So what do they pay? Well, the first thing they will pay if you're out for an extended period of time, they will pay two-thirds of your average weekly wage. In other words, they'll pay your salary, but they'll only pay two-thirds of your average weekly wage based on the last four quarters of your employment. Um, that's the first thing they'll pay. The second thing they'll pay is they'll pay for your medical bills, provided you go to an authorized health care provider. In other words, you have to, they get to pick what doctor you see. Now, if you're severely injured and you need emergency treatment, it's always acceptable to go to the emergency room or someplace for immediate care. But thereafter, follow-up care, um, you can't just go to your local chiropractor or somebody like that and expect them to pay for it like in a car accident. You've got to go to their doctor. They get to pick the health care provider. And people think that's a little bit backwards that the doctor is working for the people that are paying them, and it is because their job is basically to tell you you're okay and get back to work, but that's their job. The third thing they'll pay is for any permanent partial disability. Well, what is that? Well, once the doctor says you've reached max medical improvement and you get released, the question becomes whether or not you have any permanency. Do you have an impairment? Do you have any total disability? Um, so how does that work? Well, let's say that you are injure, you, bat, you injure your back um, and you have surgery. Um, and let's say you have what's called a laminectomy where they shave a little bit of the disc to get it off the nerve. Well, that usually will ca carry with it a 10% impairment. So how does that work? Well, you take your average weekly wage, which um, becomes the two thirds of your average weekly wage becomes your comp rate. And you take the 10% times your comp rate along with the back, which is a scheduled member in the workers' comp schedule, and the back carries 300 weeks. So the three things they pay in workers' comp is for your salary up front, two-thirds your average weekly wage, your medical bills, and then your permanency. And your permanency is based on your permanent impairment times your average, two-thirds your average weekly wage times the scheduled member. And what's a scheduled member? Every part of the body is on a chart so that if you lose one digit of your finger or two digits or the whole finger or the hand or the arm, which is considered upper extremity and so forth, everything carries with it a certain amount of weeks. So once again, you take your comp rate, your impairment, and the weeks attached to the schedule member, and you come up with your amount to settle your case. And that's the third and final thing they pay. But as you can see, it's a little tricky, a little complicated, and I know I ran through that math a little quickly, but that's why you need a lawyer to help you with these things. Um, there are a lot of other things that go into settling a worker's comp as far as permanency goes and lifetime benefits and, um, and lifetime medicals and settling them other ways, but that's the basics of it. Um, if you're injured on the job, it's most important that you immediately report it to your supervisor and let them know when and where you were injured, um, and then call us at the Clegas Law Firm at 843-720-3737. Out of town, call collect, 1-800-797-5291. Thanks, see you next week.